evening. Welcome to Bench TV. I'm Steve Pereira, and we're on Queedia, where we explore all things queer and everything media. So essentially, we explore everything. Tonight's episode, we're with Kate Hood, ex actor extraordinaire. Kate has had a career as an actor, director, singer, writer, which spans more than 30 years. She has performed in everything from musicals to classics, including Big Malian, Steaming, Chicago, my favorite, and most impressively, Murat Saad, which very few people have heard of, which is a brilliant production. Her film and television credits include Prisoner, Dancing the Dust, The Floods, Blue Healers, and she works extensively as a voiceover artist. Kate, welcome to Ben TV. Thank you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Now, you've had a very successful career as an actor, and one of the things we were talking about just before we started on air was the transition from being an able-bodied actor to being an uh, actor with a disability. Well, yeah, now this is something which I feel very passionately about because uh, I've been in a wheelchair for about 10 years and up until that point, I really had a, a full career as a, a jobbing actor mm -hmm. and um, did lots of work as you've described. Um, but since I've been in a wheelchair, my experience of being an actor and being disabled is that there's a blank space around me that people really, um, my industry doesn't really have anything available for me. In spite of the fact there's so many roles for actors for disabled people in shows. You That's know, right, yeah. So what's the problem? Why? I think that it's the same problem as with the world at large. I think that people see uh, a person with a disability and make assumptions about them. They, they think that we are not capable of doing anything. Um, for example, I've, I've really not had a casting for 10 years. Really? Really. So um, I've gone away, I've studied psychotherapy, I did a whole lot of other things. I worked for Women with Disabilities Victoria um, and I have come back in the last couple of years to the idea that actually the best way I can advocate for performers with disability is to perform. And that's how you started your own stand-up career. Is it a stand-up career or is it a performance monologue, performance artist? Or would you just um, it's spoken word probably, I would describe it as, but I've begun writing monologue, short story, um, all of that sort of stuff and performing it as well. And so I've been given a grant to do a show in Castlemaine at the Fee Broadway Theatre later Fantastic. in the year, yeah. which is really wonderful. I'm very excited about that. But, you know, for me, very exciting because I feel that, that this is a really wonderful way of connecting um, able bods to um, us crit Absolutely. performers. What's the show going to be about? Um, it's going to be a review, which is a form that I love because it's going to be a little bit of song, a bit of monologue, a bit of spoken word, a bit of poetry. Music will be in there as well. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing it. Really looking forward to it. Now, as a jobbing actor, you tend to work with scripts. So you're given a script and you then have to interpret the character. Yes. And so it's fairly straightforward. Yes. You know, this is what I've got. But as a spoken word artist, you're both creator and performer. What fuels that creative impulse in you? What's the subject matter? Probably it, it really has given me an opportunity to explore, um, to write for characters with disabilities. And for example, the monologue I'm going to do today has been written for a woman in a wheelchair, um, which is something we don't see very often. No. So and often, and when we do see it, often able-bodied actors will play the part. Now, I know, if, you know, with equity across casting, and there's been a move in, certainly with race, to ensure that, or that there's colorblind casting. Is there, is there formal movement within actors' equity, any of the movements to recognize actors with disability, to make sure that if there is a disabled character, when there are actors available to do that? Absolutely, yeah. To, to do that role, rather than putting an able-bodied person in a wheelchair, pretending he's disabled. Well, um, the really exciting thing is that Actors' Equity has recently, last, I think in the middle of last year, formed a diversity committee for the first time. For the first time? For the first time. 2013? 2013, for the first time ever. Wow. Which is really wonderful. And so I'm a member of that committee. Emma J. Hawkins is a member of oh, that right, committee. Yeah. So um, 
hopefully things will change. There'll be a dialogue within the industry and with other people as well. How do you foresee affecting that change? What, what do you see? Do you know, I, I really think that more than anything, it's about being in the same room as able-bodied people. It's about going to castings alongside able-bodied actors for the same role. Because after all, I can play a mother, mm. I can play a grandmother now. Absolutely. I can well, play. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to all those ages again. I think mean, absolutely you can play anything you wanted to. I can play a yeah. lawyer, I can play a doctor, I can yeah. play a psychiatrist. I can play these roles. So the wheelchair is actually not a barrier to it. Um, it could act, and the wheelchair could actually add another psychological dimension to your character that you might not otherwise have. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, I mean, for example, I, uh, I did Prisoner in the 80s, and um, now they're ha reviving Prisoner right. with this show called Wentworth. Wentworth. So for me, it's sort of a no-brainer that they could have somebody in a wheelchair in that show. Yeah, but Wentworth isn't for Prisoner 40 years later, is it, though? I think is Wentworth is, is a prequel, so oh, I think okay. that it's... I I'm to not too up, sure, but I think I need so. to catch up with it because apparently it's quite good. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> now, you're going to do a piece for us. Can you just describe the piece a little? The character is Esme, and she's a woman of my age mm. who lives in a, a high-rise council flats in Collingwood, and she's a wheelchair user. And because the lift doesn't work reliably, she doesn't get out very much. The city stinks. From up here you can smell it, even when you don't open the windows. <laughs> the other day I went down in the lift, it was actually working that day, <laughs> and the further down I went, the less I could smell. True. Mind you, I prefer the stink to the hordes of people down there. <laughs> Give me the 17th floor any day. <laughs> I don't know whose idea it was to put a supermarket at the bottom of the flats, but all these people come who don't even live here. <laughs> Looking for bargains, probably. They're always there on Thursdays, which is pension day. <laughs> When I have to, and only when I have to, I go down to that supermarket. And I don't know anyone there, so I just sit there and I watch the passing parade for a while. But not for too long, because the same thing always happens. Somebody always sits next to me, and I get that smile, and I get that look. I'm always fooled by it, even at my age. Un but fucking leaveable. I always think that this person is going to be really interested in me, you know? <laughs> so we start having a nice conversation and we have a bit of a laugh and I start enjoying myself, relaxing, you know? And then the question comes, how come you're in a wheelchair? And I start telling them and a bit of the way into the story, their eyes glaze over. And I can see that they wish they'd never asked me, but they'll be polite for a while. Actually, I make them be polite for quite a while. <laughs> and they'll find an excuse to leave, and that's okay by me. Or their eyes will tear up with empathy, and they'll have the solution. They'll tell me exactly what I need to do. One day I was coming back home and this woman came racing after me, clutching a piece of paper with the number of a faith healer in Indonesia on it. Indonesia! I don't know how she thought I was going to get there on the disability pension. <laughs> and then I'll be reminded that there are plenty of people who are worse off than me and I'll agree and then the joke will come. Hey, you off your pea plates yet? And I'll laugh. Of course, you've got to. <laughs> Big plates. <laughs> and they'll leave, and then I'll get in the lift and come home and feel blessed to be here. And I am, let's face it. My girlfriend Steph calls it my ivory tower. She reckons I sit up here with my head in the clouds, looking down on the world, passing judgment like a queen.
<laughs> Queen. I should be wearing a fucking tiara. Queen Esme of Collingwood. And don't you forget it. Thank you, Kate. That was brilliant. Thank you. You've been watching Queasy on Ben TV with Steve Pereira. See you next time. Good night. Good night.